Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm Nick Frosty, and in this PHP tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a simple search engine using PHP, an HTML form, and a MySQL database. The entire source code for this tutorial will be available via the link in the description. If you find this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell notifications, so that way you can keep up to date anytime new tutorials come out. Let's go ahead and get started. So now we're just going to create a very simple form that we can use in order to submit additional entries into our search engine. So we're going to create a new form with a method of post, so that way it's passing all of the form information uh, over the HTTP headers, so they're not being actually displayed to the user itself. Uh, we're going to create a title, a URL, blurb, key and keywords, uh, entry areas, or text boxes, or text areas. And then we have a submit button in order to add our entry. Now I'm displaying a value back to the user uh, that's echoing is the using the is set function for each of the variables themselves. And this is a very common method that I use in order to display information back to the user. So basically how this is working is it's going to create a Boolean statement of is set. So is our title variable created? If it is created, question mark. So if it is created, it's going to display that variable itself, whatever the text in that variable is. And then if it's not, it's just going to display a blank value to the user. That just makes it so every time the user submits the form, any errors they get or anything, it'll just automatically refill in the form so that way the user can easily edit their information. It, once there's been a successful entry, we can just empty out those variables and then it'll just display a blank variable or a blank text back to the user so that way they know that it's been good. So let's get into the PHP code for our new entry. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check to see if the uh, form has actually been submitted. And we're going to create a simple if statement. And we're going to say if is set dollar sign underscore post for our add btn. That's the name of our submit button. So basically we're just checking to say is has the user pressed the submit button or the add entry button? And if they have, we're going to get each of the form data, or so get all the form data. So we're going to get our title, and that's going to be equal to uh, using the is set function, very similar to what we're doing down here. So we're actually just checking to see if each of these uh, pieces of information was supplied to the user, or it was supplied to the uh, script itself, so if the user actually submitted them. So if the user submitted a title, then it's going to store the title from the post, and if they did not, it's just going to have an empty string. So we're going to do each of that for each of our pieces of information. Now, the way that we're actually getting all this information, there's no sort of security or anything like that. So just to add a little bit of extra security, a little bit of any security, we're going to get all of our information using the HTML entities function, or sorry, HTML special characters. So special chars. So it's basically just going to convert any sort of special characters into the HTML ASCII equivalent. So that just makes it so our code is just a little bit more secure. So that way if the user types in like a question mark or specifically like a uh, quotation mark, single or double, it'll create that or it'll convert that to a HTML ASCII equivalent. So that way it doesn't break our SQL query. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that all the form data was submitted. And we're just going to have a very simple if statement. It's just going to check for each of these pieces of information. So just, just to check to see if they were actually entered. So we're going to check for all of them. So if title and URL and blurb and keywords. Since every single element from our form is required to be added to the database. And then we're going to throw an else in here. So if all that information was not provided, then we'll give a, the user a little bit of text saying, you know, please enter please provide all data, something like that.
So now that we've made sure that the user has submitted all the information back to us, we want to actually start connecting to our database and throwing all this new entry data into the database. So our database, if you think back, we have an ID tag. Uh, so we're just going to create an ID tag so that way we don't get any uh, PHP errors. We're going to connect to the database, create a MySQL connection. Just like before, it's going to take the same information. And since we've already included our include file that has our database information, our database connection information, we can just connect the database just like this. And now we can go ahead and create our MySQL query. So since we're going to be adding a new entry to the database, we're going to use the insert query command, the uh, SQL command, and put our connection in there. So we're going to insert into, and we're going to insert into our search engine table, and our values will be every single one of our parameters. So we're going to throw in our ID variable, our title variable, the blurb, and I got to check because I don't remember off the top of my head. So when you're using the insert, the SQL insert command, you need to make sure that you're putting in the information in the exact same order that the database structure set up. So for us, it's ID, title, blurb, URL, keywords. You got to make sure you put all those in that order. All right, so that should add our new entry to the database. Now we want to check to make sure that our entry was in fact created. So we're going to create an int statement. Got to throw some comment in there. Make sure entry was created. And like I said, we're just going to make sure a quick query to check to see if the information was in fact submitted. And if not, we're going to give the user an error message saying, uh, an error occurred. No new entry was added. So we're going to check. Uh, we're going to create a MySQL num rows command. So we're going to check for the number of rows that are returned from a MySQL query. So we're going to throw our connection in and then create our query itself. So we're going to select all from search engine, where title equals our title, and URL equals our URL. So just by doing that, it's going to search through our database where our title is equal to our title and our URL is equal to the URL that was provided by the user itself. And then if we get to this point, we can go ahead and display back to the user saying your new entry was added. And then, like I said earlier, uh, we need to blank out all of our form data so that way it's not being displayed back to the user. So we're just going to set each of our different pieces of information to an empty string. that way it's just emptied out completely. So if we go back to our search engine and our new entry page, nope, got an error, a line 38, had a typo. There are two S's in is set. So I'll try again. So now we've got our very simple form being displayed to the user. So we can go ahead and create a new entry. We'll say uh, YouTube and the URL will be my YouTube channel.
and the blurb will be uh, I don't know, say uh, videos on learning to code and stuff. And our keywords will be YouTube, Nick Frosty videos. Click the add entry button. And oh, we've got an error occurred. No entry was added. Check the database. Missed a comma. Boom. Add that comma in between each of your variables. And make sure the rest of it looks good. Looks good. We refresh the page and resubmit the data. New entry was added. So if we reload, you can now see we have our new entry added to our database. So if we go back to a search engine and if we search for Nick Frosty, you can see that it's got the two URLs now. And it works like a champ. If you found this video helpful or if you're looking for that source code, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithms. Everyone's always talking about YouTube algorithms these days. Don't forget to subscribe so that way you can be kept up to date on future videos. And I'll catch you in the next one.